you're obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, you want your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hey, everyone, it's Connie Fife. And first of all, I want to just thank everyone for being here, sticking with us for the Connie Fife Show. We are beginning our ninth season, nine years doing this. And I was told, 10, 10, one more year, what, if I stick this out one more year, which I know I will, we will be listed in the Hall of Fame. So that's my goal. I'm going to stick this out. Yes, we're going to be doing this one more year in the Hall of Fame. And because of you, because of all of our listeners, we are in 210 countries, or I should say 210 terrestrial radio stations that continues to build. We have a new partnership that I'll be announcing really, really soon that I'm really excited about. Uh, we have about six and a half million impressions per month on the show, and we're just starting. And I, I say every day to our team, to our production team, that we're just starting. And then we get, I get hit with numbers like this, and it just excites me even more and more and more. And then I get a call f- for a guest like we have for today. And it excites me even more yet. And I always feel like we're just like getting going with the show. But um, so for today's guest, and you'll understand when, you, when I introduce you to him, um, he talk, he's a visionary and he's a business leader. Um, and he talks about passion and profession. And he's an internationally recognized thought leader. He's a best-selling author. He's a high-performance business strategist. And you know, that's near and dear to me. And he specializes in execution. Well, isn't he like on top of my list? And so the, three, the, the things that we're going to be talking about today are the common mistakes that we all see entrepreneurs making when they're growing their business. So let's just jump right in and let me introduce you, James Jacoby. James, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Connie Fife Show. Connie, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I am thrilled that you are here with us. I, I mean, when, when I got the the note, when, you know, when it comes in, we always look, okay, who's coming in? Who do we want to talk to? And when I saw your background, your credentials, of course, you know, it's everything that we stand for. It's everything that we do here on the show and all of the work that we do. And it's working with entrepreneurs that are visionary. And, and we like to say that we work with the crazy ones, you know, those <laughs> that believe that they could change the world. And I mean, you definitely have that characteristic. You, you definitely fit that. I don't want to say mold because we don't work with molds around here. Uh, but That's you right. definitely, you definitely fit in, in that. So, you know, what, what, are the, what are the common mistakes that you see entrepreneurs make? Well, I can speak from from both sides because I, I well, first of all, I was I've been in business for twenty years. I was in corporate, big corporate America for uh, about ten and a half years. Oh, come on, you don't look like you're, you're, you're that old. Like, you're, you're, no, really. Seriously. I got three kids. We're about to have our oh fourth, my God. which is actually which is actually uh, we're moving to um, animals now. So now we have a puppy coming in about a month. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we, um, we moved on kids. We're, we're, we're definitely at animals now. Our kids are having kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can speak from corporate and I can, sp- which is, which is working with uh, very, very big companies, fortune 100 billion dollar brands all the way down to small business owners. And then I can speak to the practical Cali of being a, a new entrepreneur, a business owner myself. So going through that experience and then helping others, um, it's it's been a fantastic and fascinating experience over the last several years. So, you know, in terms of experience, I, I, I preface it with that because this has actually been a really hot topic in my world lately too, and uh, and I'm getting it both from corporate 
and mm. from entrepreneurs. And, and I even had someone comment on my post today about this. So it's, it's perfect. But um, I think there's a couple of things that happen to, to entrepreneurs every single day that, that hold us back. And one is we, we have some mental blocks or, or things yeah. that we allow to slow us down right. in our day-to-day productivity. And, and what, we, what we realize is that, that those thoughts that we think about, whether we think we're, we need to improve something, we need to uh, refine something, we need to study something, you know, all these things that could be good. But if we look back to it, um, unless, unless you're operating from a system that can be measured in terms of productivity, mm-hmm. you really can get down a black hole fast and look up and you've lost a day, a week, maybe even a month right. of, of time. And that alone, despite no matter what business you do or what strategy you have, that loss of focus and not using a system can really hurt your business. Yeah, it really can. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, it doesn't matter what level you're at, whether you're just starting um, or you're just mid midway there or, and I, and I want to say, I mean, if you say that you're there, I, I don't think we could ever say that we're there because you always right. want to be challenging, challenging yourself to get to the next level, to get mm-hmm. to the next level. Just like I talk about with the podcast, we're always reaching, we're always trying to do, to do something better. We're always trying to scale up, but you don't want to get stuck in planning the plan. Right. Or, you know, okay, I got to read the next book. I I have to plan this. I have to look at something else because it all comes back to execution. Mm -hmm. If you're stuck and you're not executing, then nothing's happening. Well, uh, yeah. And I I love talking about this because I really don't see a lot of people talking about this. And and I hear a lot of theories or different marketing ideas or sales strategies or branding positions um, on how to be relevant, how to get new clients and have these new lead generation tactics and all this stuff. They all, they're all probably to a degree great, but um, they're distracting. They're shiny objects. Yes. And, and what I, when I can prove to myself and I can prove to all the thousands of people I've coached over my lifetime is unless you can show me, where you're doing the work every day and then I can make some assessments off of that. Mm -hmm. It's really tough to judge what's, what's not working in in your business. Cause if you're not doing the work, then it's really hard to say, well, this, this is the reason why, or this is the reason why. And that's where quality and quantity kind of come to a head. Right. You gotta, you gotta have both. Right. You're right. And and again, that, that fear factor of, well, what if it doesn't work? Right. Well, you don't know if it doesn't work unless you, don't you know. try it. <laughs> let's just try it. Because so many times entrepreneurs, I mean, they never leave go mm-hmm. because they're, you know, it's that fear factor that that set in. And just like you, I was in corporate myself. Yes. And, and I, I, I made it all the way to the CEO position. And when I lost that position, I also lost my identity. Mm. And it took me a while to to be able to move on from getting that kick in the pants and, you know, and saying, okay, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. So I was in that space. I was for about two years drinking a lot of margaritas, reading a lot of books, <laughs> taking, <laughs> going to a lot of, okay, let me take the next program. Let me yes. take the next program. Oh, me too. I've been there. Right. And you said, yeah. you're a I, I have a closet full of binders and letters after my name. And I finally hired myself a coach because mm-hmm. I said, okay, something's not working here. Yeah. And I hired myself a coach and he basically booted me in the pants from the other side and said, okay, you have to make a decision. You have a file cabinet full of information. And what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Okay. Either you're going to keep on planning or you're going to start executing. So I, w- I want to hit a point right there because that's a perfect uh, thing I wanted to share on your show today. This is one of the reasons why we get stuck in this is because mm-hmm. There's nothing inherently wrong or bad with the thought process of, oh, I, I just need to fix this. I need to learn this. I'm, I got to do this first. To a degree, that's true. Right. And you should do a little bit of that every single day, just right. a little bit. Right. But, but the problem that, that people forget is that 
we've lost focus. We've put the intention on ourselves. Yes. Instead of putting the intention on the marketplace. Yeah. And we are, remember, we are in business to be problem solvers. Mm -hmm. We can't solve us. No one's going to pay us to solve us. Right. We're going to get paid to solve something that's going on out there. Right. So unless we're out there talking with people and being in their world where they are at currently and understanding what's going on, we literally have no vantage point to enter the conversation and be of help. Right. You know, and we think, and again, you know, what do I have that people want to hear? It's like, well, you know, we, we have a lot that people want to hear. We have, you do have a lot. Yeah. But even even again, th that question in itself, it, it, let's let's work on flipping that around. It's like it's not about what people want to hear from me. It's more mm -hmm. of how can I help you? Uh, right. For you, what's going on in your world? Let me listen mm -hmm. to understand. And right. then I can provide tremendous value. Right. Listen to understand. I actually learned that in improv. <laughs> I did. I was like, somebody, you know, somebody was like, well, go to improv or go to acting class. And so I did. I went to improv. And in improv, that's what I learned. Listen to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what you learn in comedy and in improv. Listen to understand. And once I did that, oh, what do I have to offer? And in my world, what I had to offer were people like me who were losing their job. They needed someone like me to say to them, there's life after. Yes. Yes. And it was, so true. it was as simple as that to show them that there's life after. Oh, and by the way, here's how you can start an online business because I did, a, I was a guru already for you and I could show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. But it was something as simple as that. And so it's finding that, yeah. that niche, that niche in, in your, in your place. And I know that you've done that. I know that you find it, uh, you found your niche. So, so share more about your backstory and how you developed the Profit Accelerator Program, which is helping aspiring leaders. Thank you. So it, it started when I was still in corporate. So, and I think you'll really, and you, you'll relate and a lot of your listeners will, will relate with this story is you're, you're doing something for a long time. And when I say long time, I'm talking several years. You're, you're in a business, you're doing something for several years, and it really is your tradecraft. You, you've, you've dedicated your life towards it. You love it. Uh, it, it, it gets you up in the morning. Um, you want to put energy into getting better at it. It motivates you, and, um, and you just keep going. But there's, there comes some points along the way where uh, life changes, <laughs> uh, the market changes, and, and you just wonder like, man, like I, I see all these bigger names or these bigger stories out there of companies that have gone from nothing to this mm. huge number or grow all this massive growth. And, and there was plenty of times where I'm sitting there like, man, uh, you know, I, I've gone from literally like the bottom rung position to the, to, to the top. You know, I, I was leading markets. I was running yeah. sales teams. Uh, I was leading numerous product lines and I was working with the biggest companies in the marketplace, but we still weren't having this like massive growth, amazing story or the amazing culture experience where mm -hmm. you grow, you know, you have this unbelievable culture all of a sudden. And so I'm like, man, what, what are the things that I'm not seeing here? And, and the, one of the big clicks for me was about six or seven years in, I started to think, I started to ask myself different questions. And, and those questions came from the outside. I would talk to other successful people entrepreneurs usually in other different industries than my own. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to their stories and they would say, Oh yeah, you know, I went from zero to 50 million in like five years. I'm like, wow, right. awesome. How did you do that? Right. And, and it, it's kind of going back to the, like the four minute mile, right? right. I, I use it's it, You can use some different adages, but I like to use something like that where it's like, well, if this person can do it, then why can't I do it? Right. And what am I not doing or thinking about in my business to even have a chance at mm -hmm. getting to that, that level? So those kinds of questions <laughs> were the beginning of this journey of, of transformation. And so about seven, seven, eight years in, I, I, I went to my, my leadership and I said, guys, um, I like, I love, I love this company. I love what I do. I love, you know, everything here, but I just, I need to move. I need to do something different. I need to make a shift. I need to, feel like I can, I can provide more value 
doing something a little bit better or different than what I'm doing now. So I, I made a shift. I moved from a di- from one market to a new market, a different okay. market. Came from I was in Boston at the time. I came, went, from, went from Boston for five years. Came back to New Jersey, uh, New York City, Greater New York City area. And um, the short story is. Uh, I was asked to create a new division from scratch in a very competitive market, New York City, yep. uh, with big, big, long-standing competitors. Think about this, people that are listening to this for your business, right? There's there's people in your market that have been there a lot longer than you have. All these mm-hmm. big players are using them, and they like them. What on earth could you possibly do to get in there and take some market share and grow your company? Well, that was part of the problem and question I started to ask going into the market. So like I said, 10 minutes ago is my focus was, I, I feel really competent as a guru, right? right? But I need to, I need to assess the market. And so I went into the market and I, I studied it left and right. Who are my competition? Who are the, the, the types of types of companies I want to work with? Mm-hmm. What are their biggest challenges? Not anything to do with my service at all. What just, if I'm in their boardroom right now, what are they talking about? Yeah. What are they investing millions of dollars into every day to solve problems? It may have nothing to do with what I can provide. Yeah. But if I can't first understand that, then I have no value connection to what they really will pay big mm-hmm. bucks for. And when when I worked in this company, um, I helped them grow from 30 million, roughly 35 million to about almost 180 million in 10 years. Wow. Big jump. But one of the things we started to do along the way to grow was we really got super laser focused on our margins and mm. looking at our profit margins and realizing that, man, I mean, in some cases, I'm doing the same level of work, the same transaction, the same time. Mm. And in some cases, I'm getting paid two, three, four, or maybe five times as more than this other thing that I get paid for. Right. And so you have to start asking yourself, well, I'm only, I only have so much time yeah. and so much resources. And if we're getting 5X the result over here, then the obvious question is why, how can we do more of that? Right. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> and less of this. Right. That was the, that was some of this basic, simple strategy around how do we create enough value? How do we mm-hmm. create enough pricing where we can go into this market at a premium level and just kind of cut in line and say, we're going to provide better value than our competitors. We're going to, we're going to charge two to three times more, which okay. is unheard of. Right. And we're going to, and we are going to win. And we are in the clients, not only that, our clients are going to love us. They're going to say, thank you for charging us double or triple what we're used to paying. And that actually happened. They literally thanked us for we have doing a good it. point because a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs they come they come into the marketplace thinking I have to lowball my pricing. Yeah. But nope. that's that's not the case. Nope. Because a lot of times what happens when you lowball your pricing, people are going to turn around and they're going to look at that and when you love all your pricing, you're demeaning the value that you bring into the marketplace. Right. Yep. But exactly. you really want to be cautious about doing that. I mean, you don't yes. want to price yourself out of the marketplace. So right. You really need to find that balance in there. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple, Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website. Connie5show.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. There is an astronomical point where you don't want to play in, but there is oh, definitely yeah. usually some up up movement, up upward movement where you can raise your pricing right. accordingly. Where it really you the, the easiest way to tell how, how much can I raise my prices, it's really it's not a question of um, com- comparing yourself to the market. It really has to go towards 
comparing your value to the market yes. and, and, and looking at all the different things your, your target clients are spending mm-hmm. money on to solve those problems and to think through, I, this is one thing I'll share with your, your, your listeners um, okay. that I teach my clients. Sure. So real quick that, that anyone can do, this is, it sounds very basic, but if you really think through this, th- these are some incredibly groundbreaking fundamental strategies that can really position your value mm-hmm. in a very powerful way in the marketplace. And that is this, there's five gaps in the market at any given time in any industry segment, five gaps. There's time. Okay. There's a time gap. There's a efficiency gap. There is a skill gap. There's a knowledge gap. Mm-hmm. And the fifth one is, I think, I believe is a productivity gap. Yeah. Um, but, but if you, if you measure internally your company on those gaps, you can start to see where you fare. If you measure your, your market's gaps on those five gaps, you can see where the biggest and smallest gaps are. And then when you see how big the gaps are with what you know, right. you can bring to the table, there's a, there's a, there's a, you can quantify that value. And, and, mm-hmm. and that can, that's really how you got to position your products or services is, is to mirror it against the gaps in the marketplace. Yeah, that's really, really great insight on that. And and the other thing too, when you price yourself according to your value, that's the customer that you're going to attract. Yes. To to yep. you know, and if somebody comes in, you know, looking at you or lowballing you or I can't afford that price, well, nine out of ten times, that's not the customer that you want to be working with either. Yeah. So you want yeah, to be it's, careful it's about that. It's interesting. It's it's uh there, there's plenty of people that would actually pay a lot of money yeah. to work with you or I, but that doesn't mean they're the right client. Right. Um, it's, it's only a part of it. It's, it's uh, it, it really, I look at core values and beliefs. Like if, if you don't share similar core values and beliefs as how we sh- we're supposed to do business, it's mm-hmm. almost impossible for you to get the real value out of <laughs> what I'm going to help you do. Okay. Right, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't sneeze in the store right now, but he looks at you. <laughs> Go away. Run the other way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, no, all great all great advice, and it's so true. So you have to really um, like you said, look at those those five gaps in the marketplace and yes. really look at how how you brace yourself out and not devalue what what you're offering the people right. um as well. So um I mean that that's I mean, really a lot of things, and that really brings a huge, huge impact, like you said, to the brand and your genius that you bring into the mark to the marketplace as well. So so what's what's next? Um, um, where, where do you go from here? I mean, you have some really, really great advice that you've been sharing with our entrepreneurs, but what's next for James Jacoby? Well, we're we're in the process of growing and scaling this company and and our our vision for what we're doing in the market is we want to help a hundred entrepreneurs scale to at least seven figures, if not eight figures from between now and 2029. So over the next decade. And and we really want to be a, a strategic advisor role to these companies. So we can say that we've helped them grow to, to from even even nothing from startup or or mm-hmm. somewhere in in that journey that but they've taken those major leaps and we've come in and helped them. So that's that's our purpose is we really want to equip um, the business owners and the entrepreneurs that have that message, that have that that craving um, desire to share something really important that people care about that matters, but they need some, some strategy adjustments, some, some push, some, some strategic plays and some execution tactics to really accelerate the momentum of a company. Because I'll tell you, whether you're a big company and I've done, I've seen both, whether you're running, running a big company or a small, Mm -hmm. um, when you feel that apathy and you feel that stagnation in your office and your culture, it can kill you. It it can kill your business. And so you really, you really have to be clear on, on the vision and where you're going. But even if you have this really big vision out there, you you have to, you have to have something short term too. When I, when I finished my corporate career, we, when we did that, that, that launch I was talking about, we said, you know what, whether we hit it or not, we're going to, we're going to grow this thing from zero to 50 million in three years. That's our target. That sounds totally audacious and, and insane, but it, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to apply all these strategies and positions in the marketplace and yeah. see how we can do this. 
And um, we got to about 18 months in and we were about seven, about a 7 million run rate in, in revenue. Right. So that, that was, that was phenomenal growth. And, yes, and we were really happy about phenomenal. that. So do you we work with specific industries? That was within healthcare. Um, okay. So I with, did a lot of work in health. Now, with your business now, do you work with specific industries? I work with I work a lot with coaches and consultants and trainers uh, on the entrepreneurial level or some some service providers. Usually they're either okay. in the healthcare space or the financial accounting space. Okay. Okay. Those are typically where I see if they're if they're in the service space, that's where I see business and, and relationships okay. form. Um, okay. But in big corporate, um, I, I stick to my, my what I know, and I, I, I do a lot of work within staffing, um, health, and healthcare, insurance. Okay, okay. healthcare and insurance. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. cool, pretty cool. So, um, questions that I do always ask my, yes. my our guest is, what makes you unstoppable? So, what makes me unstoppable is that I never give up, no matter what. I am one of the most persistent people you will ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been, I've never had that A plus set from day one. I've right. always had to grow into it. I've always had to work towards it. But okay. if I kept on pushing and pushing and saying, I believe I can, and I believe mm -hmm. I will be, I, I just fight. And then, and it's funny, you'll look up here, maybe it's a month later or maybe it's six months later, but you look at how much you grow. And, um, and that's the mentality I've had since a kid. And that's gotten me pretty far. Mm. Who's your biggest cheerleader? Uh, my wife, <laughs> Nice. my wife, she really is. I mean, she, for her to support me to make the shift from corporate to launching my company. And then she launched her company because I pushed her and I, that was her okay. system. So we okay. both launched our own businesses and uh, they're both going really well. Nice. Very good. Yeah. Very good. And, and you need that support. And I, I mean, I've run into entrepreneurs that don't have that and that makes her a challenge. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it does definitely makes her a challenge. So what, what do you think is the biggest challenge that we have in the world today? Besides the obvious Corona right now, um, yeah. <laughs> what do you think um, is the biggest challenge that we have? I think the biggest challenge <clears throat> is, is self-awareness. That's what I wrote down for thinking through this, uh, and it kind of goes back to my book, Radical Integrity. No, no push on promotion, but that's why part of the reason why I wrote it is, um, is to really, like, have you ever really gotten quiet enough, mm -hmm. even if it's scary, to really allow for you to think through and reflect on what is your calling in life? Mm -hmm. You only have one life, YOLO. Yeah. Right? You only live once. Like, are you doing what you are supposed to be doing? Like, are you doing what God called you to do? And no matter what anybody thinks, it doesn't right. matter. Like you, we literally have to live day by day mm. and take the most of it. So are you doing what you love that you're yes. good at? And who are you surrounding yourself with? Because people deserve the best of your time that you give them. So are, are people appreciative of where you are? Or can you give your time somewhere else that people would like it more? Yes. So you know, those are the types of things that, that I've had to ask myself and that I encourage others to do. Because it's really healthy, but uh, and I, I bring that up because one of the things that I've seen so much from this situation that we're in today is that I see dads playing with their kids in their front lawn. I see yes. families go on bike bike rides around the neighborhood, talking and, to your neighbors, talking Just, to your neighbors. And yes. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. I feel like I know. So I know. it it really feels like people are becoming more aware of mm. what's important, and that's yeah. that's really important. Yeah. And I mean, just, you know, never die with that music still inside of you. And, That's right. And um, I mean, we lost my mom about two years ago and she was a country line dancer and she was line dancing till the day she died. <laughs> she was like, she was, she's my biggest body like, today. I'm still like wanting to get up and dance because that's who she was. Um, just, just, just loving every day. It's like, you know, I want to have a conversation. Just want to talk to you, mom. Um, because that's, you know, who she was and the, have people around you like that is so awesome. But yeah, like people are just talking to their neighbors today and, you know, just getting out and, and living, you know? So, yes. I mean, there's a positive, definitely a positive that's coming through all of this. So if there was a song about you, what would it, what would it be? If there was a song about me, Ooh, um, maybe my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of comments about my hair. Um, I've noticed uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always known as a very positive person. I'm always the, I'm always a motivational, positive person. So 
you know, some a song probably would be about how I help someone um, mm-hmm. you know, th- believe in themselves or, or really go 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 for more than than what they're allowing themselves for right now. Yeah, actually, I, I, I was wagging on my husband. He has hair like yours, but now it's white. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, honey, he has hair like yours. Yeah. Did. <laughs> um, so, um, okay, maybe lose my, my, my thought there. So, <laughs> so, so what do you have to share with us and promote today? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, first and foremost, I mean, no one, no one should be going through this experience that we're all going through right now alone. Yeah. Um, there's so much pressure, uh, especially as an entrepreneur, to really um, figure out. Um, how to survive, thrive, and, and grow out of this. Um, mm, some right. have had to, and then we've all we're all in different spots. So I know I understand if you're listening right now, you may have had to close your business, and that may, it has nothing. It's not your fault at all. It is right. completely what happened to you. But it, it, you can respond favorably and 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 adjust. And and that's my my message to everyone is how yeah. can we respond? And so um, I've been giving business owners thirty minute. And I charge a lot for my consulting, but I've been giving away 30 minute strategy sessions just to oh, do nice. some deep dives Beautiful. on their business. Yep. So there's no, there's no pitch in there. It's just 30 minutes and you talk about okay. whatever you want. Um, and um, hope it helps you. Wow. How beautiful. And your book? You book through, um, I guess the best way would be uh, an email address. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or I, I, could, I could give you an email address or, or you could find me on LinkedIn as well. So, okay. Okay. And we'll definitely push that out too. And if we have to show, we'll have the links and everything in there yep. as well. Yep. Right. Ra- you know, radical integrity. <laughs> so anything else you want to add before we close out? Um, I just thank you for, for what you do to provide this platform for us oh, to have yeah, these kinds you. of conversations. Cause these are really important and, and they're really valuable. So I'm very grateful that you've had me on today. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for being here. Had a great thank time. You. And thanks, Jim. Right. Bye-bye. And thanks, everyone, for being here. This is Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva, and you're here hanging out with us on the Connie Fife Show. And remember to, to go beyond and just be, be kind to each other because it, it, is a, it is a small world. Get to know your neighbors. Get to know everyone. Embrace everyone. And just, just love on each other. Take care, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. y'all it's connie fife thank you for listening to the connie fife show check back often you don't want to miss any of the good stuff if you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show head over to the connie show.com to apply while you're there check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client i will see you over there Do yourself a favor this week, activate your power, and be unstoppable together.